Hello, it's day three of the third international conference on dengue and dengue hemorrhagic fever here in Bangkok, where I'm joined in conversation by Dr. Suchitra Nimanit. Dr. Suchitra, welcome. Pleased to meet you. Doctor, you've been studying dengue and other tropical diseases in Southeast Asia going right back to the 50s. Can you take me back there? What was it like during that time? Well, uh, it started in 1954. 54 that we, uh, we have the outbreak of the disease which uh, we didn't know before that is what is the cause of that disease but it uh, happened in the Philippines before and it was called Philippine hemorrhagic fever when it came to Thailand in 1954 it started in Bangkok first we start to see most of them are children and we are the children hospital at that time the institute our institute called Children Hospital. So we get to see uh, more of the patient because uh, of being the same age group. We see they have fever and uh, have some breathing and four or five days they will collapse or what you call shock and die very rapidly. So we call it Thai hemorrhagic fever. And uh, since then, the very early 54, actually it's in Bangkok, but gradually for years after that, it started to spread to other nearby country where the communication is convenient. And at the same time, we study the patient, we have more experience. So we can bring the case variety rate down from 13 category to, you know, below 10 and, you know, lesser than that. And some of those experiences along the way were in quite dangerous places. You were telling me earlier that you spent time in Vietnam during the Vietnam War and also in Indonesia. Can you talk about that time? Well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's a new disease for us. Uh, it's called Philippine Thai, but later on the causative agent has been proved that it's a dengue virus, so the name has been changed to dengue, hemorrhagic fever. and. Uh, after Thailand, there have been the outbreak in other countries like Indonesia, Vietnam, and Laos and Cambodia, Myanmar came after that. So our study has been known uh, that we know that it's a dengue virus causing dengue hemorrhagic fever. We changed the name from the country name. And uh, once we reported our finding of the clinical finding how to manage to reduce the case fertility rate, the World Health Organization asked me to go and help in the Indonesia and other country. You said USAID asked to go to Vietnam in '72. As you mentioned, it's still the you know war in the Vietnam. So when I went to this country, and uh, we study the clinical together with the doctors in the that country, and we learned that the diseases are similar. It happened in Vietnam or Thailand or uh, Indonesia. We can apply the, you know, our knowledge to recognize the disease early, make diagnosis, and management, and help bringing down the case fatality rate in each country that they have the disease. Do you think it's a misconception that some people believe dengue outbreaks are confined to poor or impoverished areas? It's quite the opposite because at the very first time we found that better nourished children, not very poor, that have this disease in some country, you know, as the first in, in Indonesia, the first report cases were in the private hospital. It's a, a little bit well to do, you see, and in some other country it's among the uh, high position. The children are from the high position. And you know, if you see the collection of the, the water that uh, breeding the mosquito, the, the better economic, they have more places to breed the mosquito. So not only the poor, it's all class of life, you know, that could be affected. And that presents big challenges, no doubt. Yes, it is. It is. And you know, now, from Bangkok or over Southeast Asia, Webro, the Western Pacific region, now is almost all uh, over the world in the tropic or subtropical area where, you know, very well, it's highly populated. 
and because of the being subtropic, this mosquito can live in this area. And increase in population worldwide, increase in transportation, convenience of movement of the people. And the people come and go to pick up the disease, or sometimes the mosquito can go with vehicle within the country. So it's very much an, an ongoing yes, battle. Yes, yes. And uh, the problem is that in the new area of outbreak, it starts as we start in the old days because they didn't know how to make diagnosis and management. So in any country with new outbreak, you will get a high case fatality rate. Well, good luck with, with the, the continued battle. Dr. Suchitra, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. It's my pleasure.